So today we're going to predict our economic rate just to make our rate time analysis more complete. And we're going to use this number going forward to help us forecast reserves using different decline curve methods. So it's important to kind of understand how this number is derived. Of course, this is a simplified example because a lot of times your economics take into account different uh, parameters that I won't show in here, but this is a good first order analysis and gives you approximate results uh, that are more reasonable than just throwing in a random number as we we have been doing. So um, if you want to learn more about this stuff, there's a previous video on net cash flow. Uh, go look at that one. I'm doing the exact same thing here, um, but there's two major assumptions we're going to do in this case uh, for oil uh, well, we have two streams. We have a gas and an oil stream. In, in this instance, we're just going to take into account the oil stream because it greatly reduces the math that we have to do. And further, it's more conservative because you're only looking at one stream. You're neglecting all the uh, returns from gas. So you're actually um, making your estimate more conservative. Also, um, I'm assuming cost and operating cost. This helps the math out tremendously. And so those are the two major assumptions. We're assuming cost and operating cost, and we're just using the revenue from the oil stream to predict our economic limit, which will help us get more accurate reserves. So this is the economic parameter box. So I'm taking into account these parameters right here. And um, of course, an economic package will have more of these. But for our example, uh, this will do. So working interest is basically the amount of expenses you have to pay for producing this well. And so they break it down into percentages. Uh, a lot of companies will go into um, maybe a big project um, and split up the working interest. In this case, I'm just going to assume that our operating, our operator is has 100% working interest, so they're paying all the expenses to produce this well. And in the states, you have to uh, pay your your uh, the people that own the land a royalty, so they get a, a cut of the production. Usually, it's it can be between like I don't know. 12 and a half and 25 percent so I'm just going to assume that uh, they're getting an eighth of production which is 12 and a half percent and also the state and county are going to want a cut of your production and also the federal government I'm neglecting that in this case but um, for the severance tax the state tax I'm just going to throw in a number of seven percent and then ad valerum tax is a county tax I'm just going to throw in a number two percent and then operating cost, I'm going to assume a constant value of $6,000 per day to operate this well. And then the price of oil, I'm just going to throw in $35. Bucks. Uh, that, that can change, but for right now, we'll assume that. And so the NRI is actually your net revenue interest. So it's basically the cut of production you get. And uh, so this is represented by a simple fundamental formula right here it's going to be equal to your working interest times one minus your royalty so if we do that so if we do that um, our net revenue interest for our uh, for our company is seven eighths so um, now we can go ahead and calculate a net price. So in reality, uh, the price of oil that we sell at, we're not going to get all of that um, because of, uh, you know, we have to pay the royalties and the taxes. So um, <clears throat> we get a, a net price basically tells us how much money we make per barrel that we produce, um, taking into account, you know, interest and royalties. And so um, that's simply going to be um, our net revenue interest times the price of oil times 1 minus the taxes. So we have two taxes, the severance tax and the ad valerum tax. So we should track both of those out. And so we're making approximately $20 per barrel that we produce. And no, this isn't taking into account operating cost. This net price doesn't take that into account. 
And so now we can predict an economic limit. It's simply this formula. It's going to be our operating cost divided by our net price, which is simply going to be 6,000 divided by 28. So our economic limit is 215 stock tank barrels of oil per day. Once our well reaches that point, then we, we're not making any money beyond that point. And so, you know, we, we need to stop producing now. And, uh, <clears throat> of course, we have drilling and completion costs. That doesn't go into our, uh, our economic rate because it's an initial cost. Um, if you look at a net cash flow diagram, we're looking at the furthest future in time of our cash flow streams. And in that case, we just have our operating cost and the revenue coming from the oil. And so that's why we don't use this. But it's important for our NPV calculations. So now that we've got a better representation of our economic limit, we can put it in and calculate our reserves. So in this case, I'm going back to our cumulative or oil reserves, and I just have to change a parameter. Instead of it being 50, our economic rate, it's going to be 215, and that'll update our reserves as shown there for this well that we looked at previously. And so that's our new values. That's a more accurate representation of what to expect uh, when we produce this well. Of course, you can fiddle with these numbers and uh, play what if and see how that affects your reserves. Um, I think that's a good exercise to do. But anyways, that's all I have today, guys. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I'll see you next time. Adios.